You know, some people, they just can't get enough. More, 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 more. All they want is more. Well, they should start programming in Scratch because you could create as many blocks as you want. So the true power of any programming language is your ability as a programmer to create new commands. Typically called functions, sometimes procedures or methods. In Scratch, it's called more blocks. So we're going to create a new block, a new command called walking. So let's make that happen. All right, Scratches, welcome back to Scratch Town. And so in this tutorial, what we're going to do is use more blocks. The power of any computer programming language is the ability to create your own commands. So if you look in more blocks, you can see I've created a block or a command called walking. It takes in one parameter or one piece of input. That input is an integer, and that integer represents how many steps we want our sprite to take. So I'm going to go get the flag from events. I'm going to move my sprite to the left of the screen. I'm going to go to motion and get my go to block. So that's where he's going to start every time I run the program. And then under more blocks, I'm going to get the walking block. It has a one parameter, so it should take one step. Click the flag. Now when I change that parameter to five, he should walk most of the way across the screen, taking five steps. And he does. So let's go and create our own walking block command. All right, guys, so let's make it happen. Unleashing the power of any programming lies in the ability to create your own commands. In Scratch, we're creating more blocks. In most languages, they're called functions, sometimes referred to as methods or procedures. So I've created a new project. I've called it simple walking block because that's what we're going to do. This block will take in one parameter or one piece of input, which will tell the sprite how many steps we want it to take. Get to where I am and let's start the program. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the cat sprite because we don't need it. So I'm going to hover over, right click and delete. We're going to get the sprite we need for this program from the library. So down where it says new sprite, we're going to hit Pico. It's going to be a person, so I'm going to click people. And the sprite we need is called Jamie Walking. Just double click. Now, if you look at the costumes, you'll notice that it takes five costumes for Jamie to take one step. And that's important as we move forward. So the first thing we need to do is create our block. So go on to more blocks. We're going to make a block. We're going to call it walking. W I N G. But before we hit OK, we're going to click on options and we're going to add a number input. Inputs are typically called parameters. So we're going to take one number parameter and now we're going to hit OK. And as I mentioned before, that parameter will represent how many steps we want our sprite to take. So first we're going to program one step. So we're going to go to control and we're going to get a repeat. Now, as we saw just a second ago, there are five costumes in a step. So I'm going to repeat five times. Now, each step we want our character to move forward. So I'm going to go into motion and get a move 10 command. And we want it to change costumes. That would be under looks. So under looks, you get next costume. Now that's basically all we would need to do, but if you look, when I double click that block, he kind of moves real quick. So we need to control the speed at which the costume changes happen. So we do that under control and we use a wait command. One second is too long, so we're going to wait a fraction of a second, one tenth of a second, or point one. So now we've programmed a step and we want to run this block of code for every step we take. So that means we need to have nested repeat loops. So I'm going to get an, another repeat loop from control and I'm going to nest the step inside that repeat loop. Now I don't want to take 10 steps every time. 
I want to take the number of steps that the programmer tells me to. So that is the inputted number, or in this case, number one. So I'm going to grab my number one and put that in that outer repeat loop. And right there is our walking command. So now let's test the command. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my sprite to the left of the screen. I'm going to go to events and start it with a flag click. I'm going to go to motion and get the go to XY block. This will initialize Jamie at the same place every time. And now I'm going to go to my mall block. And now when I click the flag, he should take one step. Now if I change that to five, he should take five steps. And there we go. We have created our own command, a simple walking block. Stay tuned for a future video where we're going to create a more complex walking block that takes in multiple parameters and you can actually pick which way your sprite will move to the left or to the right. All right, guys, until next time, keep on coding. And as always, like what you like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.